play, and, and he forced me to preach every Friday night, and uh, that scared the uh, scared uh, scared me bad. And uh, but I got to, but, but I got to liking it. And, and thank, isn't you that wonderful? You started to scared the fire out of me. Yeah, it really did. No, you had fire. But isn't it wonderful? He gave me that opportunity. I may never preach the gospel. That dear brother Dillard told me, "Teal, you either preach or turn white and sit down." You just get up there and do that. You. Well, boy, I had, I prayed. Oh, I had, I had, I had calluses on my knees when we got married. I prayed. Oh, boy, I prayed hours a day. He taught me I had to. We'd fast three days and three nights without a drop of water or nothing. It's a wonder I didn't die. We did it often. Three days and nights, you know. It don't take many days without water to die. <laughs> I know. When, Boy, when, but, when did you feel the Lord calling you now to overseas work? When, when did that come? We married in 42. We went to India as missionaries in 45. So he was on the job a very short time. And then he left it. And we went back to California as evangelists. And we were... Then we took... We passed a church in Portland, Oregon. We found... We went... We were in Oregon, and we found this big tabernacle that was practically abandoned. I think they had 19 people, and we felt the Lord calling us there to pastor. Now, we were 19 and 20. And uh, so we built that church up, and in a year, a missionary came to our church one Sunday morning, and she told about the need in India. And we made just one of those decisions. We resigned, and we went to... We started raising our money, went to India. God, God did a wonderful thing to us, though, in California, up and down California, we preached. <clears throat> At that time, in, in, in the Pentecostal Church of God churches, and they had a superintendent whose name was M.F. Corrin, and he had been a missionary when he was young. He preached India into us mm -hmm. and preached really giving into us, oh. taught us to give see, I'd and taught us to him. love the people overseas. And I've always thanked God for the influence of that man. Now, this is 45, you said. 45. The, the, uh, the war was the war just was coming just to a conclusion. Just over. Yeah, just. Mm -hmm. and so just. Our ship went through the mined waters. And really? Mm -hmm. really? Mm -hmm. You spent a few years then in India, but... No, no ten months. <laughs> ten months. Ten months. God wants something to move fast. He, he calls us. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, what now, were those... He, he'll take over here. What that, were those first uh, days like in India? I, uh... We went to India to help those poor people. We had heard how poor they were, and we thought, well, if they don't know about Jesus, the people over here in America, they have a chance to know. Why not help them? There's more of them than they needed. So we went. By that time, we had our little boy. He was 10 months old. And, uh, and so we, we, we sold everything we had. And when we got out there, the, the people were so kind to us. You know, India is the most beautiful country, mm -hmm. beautiful the most people. beautiful people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, what stumped me, th th those Muslims, they, they were so kind to us. They must have seen us as a young couple from America with our little boy. They must have thought, that's a terrific young couple. Looking back now, I'm sure they thought that. And they were kind to us and tried to help us along. They could tell we were greenhorns. We, we, we weren't prepared. We shouldn't have been in India. Oh, don't we, say that. Well, because... you know. But anyway, I was so stumped with the little marketplaces where we'd go buy some rice or bread or our vegetables. He'd greet me, good morning, Brother Osborne. Brother Osborne. And I thought this pagan. Praise God today. Isn't the Lord... Well, I just didn't expect them to talk like that. <laughs> it pulled the skids out from under me. I didn't know what to do. I went out there to convert those heathen, those pagans. <laughs> and here they were talking about the same God. I found they worshipped the same God that we worship. Those Muslims. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, yes. yes. I didn't know that, Paul. Mm -hmm. Jen, I was floored. I, I began to figure, what am I supposed to tell them? So I decided, well, we've got to tell them about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I told them about Jesus. Yes, they thought Jesus was a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought, where am I going to go from here? <laughs> <laughs> they, they said, oh, and they told about their Quran, and, and they told about the teachings of Muhammad, and how many of the teachings of Jesus they thought were so wonderful. I thought, wow, where do I go from here? Well, I, I told them about his miracles. Yeah, they knew he was a healer. I didn't know they believed he was a healer. Yes, they believed in his miracle. Hear me try and convert these pagans. <laughs> I was looking, what am I, I going to convert them to? Mm -hmm. 
Then I began to get closer and I found out. I thought, well, if thou shalt conf believe in that, if that, confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay, I knew that's what they got to believe. So I told him, yeah, it's wonderful. He was born of a virgin. No, no, no. Conceived of the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. Died for our sins. No, no, no. His blood was divine. No, no, no. God raised him from the dead the third day? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Then I saw where we were at. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. catapulted us to the issue, Paul, that changed our life. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say to everybody that's listening, two things. Daisy and I came from nowhere. God picked us and used us. And God's picking you or you wouldn't be listening. Amen. Right. And no matter where you come from, how young you are, how... You, maybe you feel out of step or problems or questions or you haven't got it together or you, you don't know where you're going to go and you've been diverted by this temptation that God calls T.L. and Daisy to come on this, on, on this tube tonight to tell you Jesus is talking to you tonight and wants to use you. Amen. The other thing is, I want to say, that song he just sung, because he lives, we can live. Amen. And I want to tell you, here's what Daisy and I had to discover. How do we prove this to these people that this Jesus is alive? What's the use to have a dead Christ? What's the use to have a Christ of the Bible? Beautiful. Wow. What a, you know, we preach to people like that all the time know about Christ in the Bible. What good does that do? I don't think you're interested in Jesus healing a woman with an issue of blood. Uh, 2,000 years ago, if you've got an issue of blood now, mm -hmm. right. your issue Amen. Amen. If you're blind, it's not going to help you to know that Bartimaeus sat by the roadside begging and got healed 2,000 years Amen. ago. Will right. Jesus heal your blind eyes now? That was the issue, Paul, that Daisy and I came to in India. Mm -hmm. Is this Jesus alive? So we said, yeah. They said, no. Okay, where do you go from there? They said, prove it. And they were honest people. You know the Muslims are so beautiful? Yes. yes. Uh, you're dealing they're with I grew up uh, in yeah. Egypt. I, they're, yeah. they're you know about them? Yes, I know. Beautiful people. Love God. I said, I'll, they said, prove it. And we'll believe it. <laughs> the best words ever spoken to us. Mm. They prove said, do you it. remember what we did when they said that? Well, you, we got our Bibles. You bet. Said we'll show you. Bo we'll take you to the scriptures Man. and show you. Here we went. And I'll <laughs> tell you. And you know what they did, Paul? They got their books. Here come their Quran. They laid it there. You can match letter to letter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both of us had black. Holy I said, "What's that?" They said, "The Holy Quran, the Word of God, given by the mouth of its prophet." Holy Prophet Muhammad. I said, who's Muhammad? <laughs> Jesus, I, I know I who's didn't Muhammad. Know. Yeah. Quran. I looked at that. Wow. You got a book. I, you said God's Word? Never. No. Boy, I come to life then. I was ready to fight. Mm -hmm. No. The Bible is the Word of God. Man, I grew up in the Bible Belt. I thought the whole <laughs> world had sense enough to know the Bible was the Word of God. Oh, my. So I laid it there. And they both had gold print on it. The Word of God. Well, Paul, that's where we couldn't prove it. We couldn't prove it. We read it, but they said, no, it says this. Our said this, which was right. I couldn't prove it. And right then, Daisy and I made the decision. We talked, we said, let's get out of here. We're embarrassing God. We're embarrassing the Christian faith. We're embarrassing ourselves. We're not doing God any good. We're not doing these people any good. Let's go back to America where they already believe the Bible. We got out of there. Again, we acted quick. Isn't it amazing how God sometimes can take you, bang, 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 to put you on focus with all of these dumb moves? Yet, by the time we were 22 and 23, we got it together. We were in mass evangelism this by the time we were... part of your education, yes. though. The Lord yes. was See, schooling you. Right. See, you didn't right. go through a big university no, we to didn't. learn about Mohammedanism right. and, and Islam. An interesting no. thing, we were in no. India at the time Mohammed, Mahatma Gandhi was uh, leading the masses. The uh, nonviolent uh -huh. non yeah. revolution to get to uh, put the British out. And that's where we were seated for the masses. Mm -hmm. Where could God have taken us in 1945 and 46 to seed us for mass evangelism? Mm -hmm. That's where the masses were moving, the restless masses. That's why I said last night, whenever you see a nation in revolution, that's a time to seed with the gospel. 
because their soil is all torn up and they're cultivated they're ready for seed and it's the gospel seed they need so we were in India and we saw those masses and we wondered years after how was that ever born in our minds to think of going to the masses why didn't we think going to countries and having a little mm -hmm. church what and years and years later we discovered that's where we were seated for the masses so we were there at that time and then we came home in our search to find the answer and we found the answer okay let's have it mm -hmm. yeah because that yeah. drove you, I'm That's sure, to the Word and to your knees yeah. and to God. You, you didn't Precise. really, you weren't seeing the actual miracles right. of God in oh. a, in See, a, in I had never seen a miracle. Now, I was, I, after I got saved, I was in the Assembly of God Church. Mm -hmm. And they prayed for the sick. Mm -hmm. And they toughed it out. And they didn't take medicine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they died. Mm -hmm. But I never saw a miracle. I mean, an instantaneous miracle I never saw. Mm -hmm. huh. Today, when we say these things that T.L. and I had to come back from India and have a revelation, find out what the answer was, it sounds so strange because today, truth is known so widely. But I believe there's people looking tonight and sharing this, this program with us that don't know. I mean, you're just as, you're right where T.L. and I were in India. You've, you've known the gospel, you've grown up in church, but you've never seen a miracle. You've never, you need one. We needed one. So we started our search. I feel uh, in my spirit right now there are many people right on the verge of there you're right they're at the same point mm -hmm. ministers pastors evangelists that's right you long to see the miracle working power of god but you don't see it yet yeah. how did yeah. how did you all discover it I, and i want to just reflect back on that beautiful uh roll in that you showed a while ago of you down there in, in the trans sky uh, the cis sky mm -hmm. uh, arthur so precious and you've talked before when i was out here before we talked about during those fasting periods he had and praying for the people mm -hmm. and the miracles happening see that makes a difference now when we hadn't seen that so when we came home we asked God see we'd seen the message what's the answer and we were we were going to see Amy McPherson but she died oh, yeah. we didn't get to see her we were going to see Dr. Charles Price the great man of faith. Took, we took a lot of his took, magazines. Uh, Golden Grain, his magazine. Mm -hmm. While India he had with typhoid us. fever for six weeks, I would read Golden Grain to him. Yeah. To mm -hmm. we were struggling. You know, we were really reaching out for mm -hmm. for healing. We just didn't know. So we were going to see him. He died mm -hmm. just before he came to Brooks, Oregon, to the great Assemblies of God camp meeting, and we were at McMinnville pastoring at that time, coming home from India. And I'd gone to the church, we'd pray, and we would pray and fast together. Oh, Jesus, what's the answer? You've got to help us. Why did we care about those masses? And when Charles Price died, I went to the church, and I wept, and I wept, and I said, Oh, God, who will now reach these great auditoriums of people? Who will show them the power of God? I never dreamed that I was being seated. Isn't that strange? Why I, I cannot tell you, Jan and Paul, how I wept that day. Charles Price died. Mm -hmm. Amy McPherson had died just before that. Smith Wigglesworth had died just before that. And we hadn't gotten to see any of them. It broke my heart. I came home, Mindy. I said, Lord, I'll go home. I'll see some of these great people of God. One after another dropped. So we went to Gone. Angela's temple Gone. and we saw all the proof that there had been miracles. The crutches, they the had braces. crutches and braces yeah. and all these kind of yeah. things in glass cases. So the material evidence was there, but we we didn't get to see her and mm -hmm. see how. It was and, done. and so I went and I wept and I wept and that's all I wept. Lord, who will attract the masses? Who will go to the crowds? And then someone told me Hattie Hammond was going to take Charles, Charles Price's Price yeah. place. Oh, I know. Hattie. And yeah. she's a yeah. precious, precious woman of God, yes. still preaching. I, I just know. heard you last You see, women night. have had great effect upon <laughs> yes, him. A I woman know. led him to Christ, and now it's Hattie Hammond. So you keep track of these women. And you, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she was there. What did she preach on? If you ever see Jesus, you will never be the same again. Oh, my. Oh, Paul, I can never tell you what that meant to me. John chapter 1. Come and see. Hmm. I wept. We both wept. When we went out of there, we sat in the car a long time. We held down. We said, that's what we need. As we drove home, I'd wipe the tears to see down the road, driving home to McMinnville. We said, that's what we need, to see Jesus. 
And the next morning, at six o'clock, Jesus walked in our bedroom, mm -hmm. and I looked on him. Oh, thank God for that moment. Oh, you know, I feel he's walking in your life Amen. tonight. Whether you see him, or whether uh, you, you may dream, or you may see a vision, or you may feel his presence, we wouldn't be talking like That's this right. if it wasn't for you. Right. What's this program about? People. Yeah. You. You. Individual. Why are you listening? Amen. You are marked by destiny tonight Amen. to meet Jesus Christ in a new way. Amen. He walked into my life. I lay there as one dead. I could not move a finger or a toe. Water poured out of my eyes. Yet I didn't weep. I wasn't conscious of weeping. I saw the Master. After a long time, I was able to get out of bed and lay on the floor, and I crawled on my belly. The presence was so awesome into a little ante room that I used for my study. I lay there on my face until the early afternoon. When I walked out of there, one thing had changed in me. Jesus Christ was not a dead religion. See, I'd come from India. We'd come from there. Religion, everything was religion. Religion, religion. Now, I had more than a religion. I knew. I knew they talked about Muhammad and they knew he was dead. I knew that Jesus Amen. I was talking about was not dead. Amen. He was alive. Go to his grave. He's not there. He's alive. He's in me. He's coming to you. Amen. That's what I knew. Now, when that happened, I saw Jesus. Right quick after that, William Branham came to Portland. That dear little man. When his minister was so precious and so great, I heard about him. We went. We saw Jesus in a man. When we saw the miracles, 10,000 voices whirled over my head and said, You can do that. You can do that. Oh, I was thinking of India. Oh, boy. I that was the answer. You know, I get so excited about that. Go ahead. The people need the living Jesus. They said, you can do that, you can do that, you can do that. I knew I could do that. We went home. What, wait a minute, what did you see in some of those meetings? I've heard so much about William Branham that oh, I never, I never oh. saw him or got well, to meet him. The first person was uh, what you call a hunchback. First person. Extreme curvature of the spine. Extreme curvature of the spine, bent over him with a big hump on the back. And this gentle man, he didn't weigh more than 113 pounds small, had a, about a third grade education. Such a quiet voice. I mean, we came from rambunctious meetings. I mean, where you had to talk loud for people to hear what you were preaching. Mm -hmm. This gentleman preached, and he came in, and he didn't even touch him. He just spoke and commanded the spirit to leave. Mm -hmm. And then he just touched his back, and that man just straightened up, and that hump just disappeared. Oh, mm -hmm. And then we saw deaf and dumb, mm -hmm. and he just whispered real soft. And in those days, they had the tick tick wrist wa watches, you know, mm -hmm. pocket watches, and he put that to his ear, hold it out here, and that child could hear it could speak, could repeat everything he heard, mm -hmm. blind. We saw every, every person, we saw every person heal. People come out of wheelchairs, off of beds. People healed of TB. But you see, what oh. the, the thing that clicked, mm -hmm. he rebuked the spirit of infirmity. Mm -hmm. He called it, he preached he where it. sickness comes from. Well, we knew that. We thought it come from germs. Everybody has mm -hmm. sickness. But he preached that it's the work of the devil. He started in the Garden of Eden and took it right on through to Christ mm -hmm. on, and, and the atonement. And he showed our redemption yeah. and he showed our authority. When we accept Jesus, he gives us his name mm -hmm. and gives us his nature. Mm -hmm. He says, Amen. you can use my name. I give you power over all devils. Cast, cast them, out, them out. Cure the sick. Mm -hmm. And he just said, you spirit of deafness, leave the child. Mm -hmm. You spirit that crossed these eyes, mm -hmm. come out of the child. Amen. Mm -hmm. Eyes go straight. Mm -hmm. And those voices said, you can do that, yes. you can do that. Amen. That's the way Jesus did it. That's the way Peter did it. That's the way Paul did it. That proves the Bible ways today. You can do that. Ooh, glory. When we Ooh. went home. I'm about glory to get excited to here. My Lord. When we went home, we said, honey, we said to each other, let's make a pact. You remember what it was? Let's, let's open this, these Gospels and let's read it as though... We never read it before uh, in our life. Read it fresh. Whatever he said to do, let's, let's do, do it. it. Oh, my. Whatever he said he'd do, let's, let's expect, expect him, to, expect do him to do it. 
And that is, that's the It's same. that that's simple, that. isn't it? Mm -hmm. We saw Jesus in the vision. We saw Jesus in a man. We found Jesus in his word. We went out and acted on it, got on the radio, called the people. They came. We prayed, cast out devil. It's like a little brain.